Good morning, friends and neighbors, and welcome to Sound Bites with Bill Wood, a certified lay minister at St. Paul's United Methodist Church here in El Paso, Texas. It's good to be with you today, and I trust that God is blessing you. And if you have any prayer requests, I encourage you to send those to St. Paul's email address so that we may lift them up to the Lord. As we begin our time together, please join me in prayer. Heavenly Father, open our hearts and our minds to the truth of your word as found in Ephesians, this, 14th, this fourth chapter. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. In Ephesians chapter 4, verse 17 through chapter 5, verse 21, Paul describes more or less the moral standards for new members of the church. He does this by giving a contrast between the old way of life and the new life in Christ. And as you probably know, the churches that Paul started consisted primarily of Gentile converts. Therefore, they did not have a spiritual background of a relationship with a living God as the Jews had. So Paul in these verses is sharing his thoughts on what is expected of Christians. In verse 17 through 19 in the fourth chapter, Paul talks about three characteristics of the Gentile's life before coming to Christ. So if you would, open your Bibles to Ephesians, the fourth chapter, and we will read verses 17 through 19. And keep your Bibles open because we will be reading together other verses as well. So I tell you this, and insist on it in the Lord, that you must be no longer live as the Gentiles do and the futility of their thinking. They are darkened in their understanding and separated from the life of God because of the ignorance that is in them due to the hardening of their hearts. Having lost all sensitivity, they have given themselves over to sensualities so as to indulge in every kind of impurity with a continual lust for more. And Paul says in verse 18 that the life before Christ, Gentiles were darkened in their understanding and separated from the life of God because they didn't know any different. And this is the first characteristic that Paul talks about here. Paul describes this as the hardening of the heart. And in the Old Testament, we find where the Jewish people are going against the will of God because of their hardening of their hearts, willfully turning away from God and worshiping idols. Gentiles before Christ were doing the same. <clears throat> they were idol worshipers and they participated in whatever idol worshiping allowed. Uh, Barclay describes this as human hearts so turned to stone that they were not even aware that they were sinning. The second characteristic that Paul talks about in these ver two verses is that they lost all sensitivity to moral standards. The commentaries that I read seem to think that this means that they lost all fear of the consequences of their actions. So if they had lost all fear of the consequences of their actions, then they openly sinned and didn't care who saw them or who knew what they were doing. This is also described as people so dominated by sin that all sense of shame was lost and decency forgotten. The third characteristic then is they indulge in all kinds of impurities and have a continual lust for more. They can't satisfy that lust. Paul saw men and women so much at the mercy of their desires that they did not care whose life they injured or whose innocence they destroyed as long as their desire was satisfied. These characteristics Paul points out to remind the Christian Gentiles that they need to have done with that kind of life, no longer live and indulge in those kinds of things, that they did not come to Christ as a result of that kind of life and now they need to build on the life that brought them to Christ. So let us read verses 20, 20 through 24 to see how Paul encourages them to live in the life that Christ has for them. 
You, however, did not come to know Christ that way. Surely you heard of him and were taught in him in accordance with the truth that is in Jesus. You were taught with regard to your former way of life to put off your old self, which is being corrupted by the deceitful desires, to be made new in the attitude of your minds and to put on the new self created to be like God in true righteousness and holiness. Paul reminds them of how they came to Christ, the truth that they were taught, and encourages them to put on the new man, to put off the old man, the old way of life, and put on the new and continue to live in Christ. And Paul describes this in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17 through 20, where he says, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation, the old has gone and the new has come. All this is from God who reconciled us to himself through Christ and gave us the ministry of reconciliation. That God was reconciling the world to himself in Christ, not counting men's sins against them. And he committed to us the message of reconciliation. We are therefore Christ's ambassadors as though God were making his appeal through us. We implore you in Christ, and Christ on Christ's behalf, be reconciled to God. God made him to be no sin. God made him who had no sin to be sin for us, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. And then Paul says in verse 23 of this chapter, he says, to be made new in the attitude of your mind. Now, what does that mean? Perhaps this could be explained in Romans 12, the second, the 12th chapter, the second verse. And I will read verses one and two from the Amplified Translation. I appeal to you, therefore, brethren, and beg of you in view of all the mercies of God to make a decisive dedication of your bodies, presenting all of your members and facilities and faculties as a living sacrifice, holy, devoted, consecrated, and well-pleasing to God, which is your reasonable service and spiritual worship. Do not be conformed to this world, to this age, fashioned after and adopted by its external superficial customs, but be transformed, changed by the entire re renewal of your mind by its new ideals and its new attitudes, so that you may prove for yourself what is the good and acceptable and perfect will of God, even the things which is good and acceptable and perfect in his sight for you. I think this is the way that Paul wants the Christian Gentiles to live, and as far as that goes, for you and I also to live. Paul wanted them to continue to grow in Christ and therefore be able to stand strong and to be able to do what he pointed out in verses 14 through 19. And we talked about that last week. And this is a result of studying God's Word and being involved in Bible studies in small groups. And by the way, the opportunity for us to be involved in a, in a Bible study is now available to us as Pastor Amy begins her Bible study on 1 Peter on August the 25th, and this will start at 6 p.m. It will be a class on Zoom, and if you have not yet signed up for it, please consider to do so. I believe that these verses 20 through 24 describe in part the way that we are to live. Paul continues his words of encouragement then to his readers and hearers of this letter with verse 25 and we will start our discussion with those verses next week one final comment at some point in time i wrote these words on a piece of paper and put them in my bible here on this chapter four it says right thinking is crucial to right living thought and attitude are the basis of speech and action Right thinking is crucial to right living. 
thought and attitude are the basis of speech and action. So have a great day and may the Lord bless you.